Good morning, welcome to day 17. All your flowers should be done and now we're moving on to stems. We will be working with um, silk straw and sock yarn as well as many of the threads that we have used in previous flowers. The two threads that I added to my piece was the sock yarn, which are these, um, and they're 100% wool and a nice sort of bulkier thread to work with and they stitch beautifully through wool so they come in all different shades but um, these were really fun um, to add for my stems. The other one is this uh, silk straw um, and, or straw silk and that is 100% silk but what is lovely about it is it's a flat thread so it's flat and it has this beautiful sheen to it and so when you're stitching with it, um, especially something like a closed fly stitch, it lays flat and broad, so it gives a nice um, dimension to the stitch and also, like I said, has a beautiful sheen. So the first thing I did was I went through a lot of the th my threads and started um, getting a lovely color selection together and as you can see these are what I actually used for my stems um, and I use very velvet um, which has you know a nice um, sort of velvety feel to it and I used a couple of size eights in a sort of brighter color then some fives and um, threes and then I, so I did some soft cotton the plied sock yarn, these are sock yarns, and silk straw. And um, I like to do a range of blue greens to sort of uh, bright greens, I guess, and sort of limey colors so that you get some difference in the background and they don't all look the same. Um, and it's also very important to have different weights of thread and especially thicker threads like size threes are, are really good for, for standalone stems. Um, so you can sort of see the array of colors that I picked. Um, so go through your stash and find um, some nice textural and heavy and finer weight threads um, and work from those. And I always work from my little stacking baskets, put them all in a basket and then I have a nice little selection to work from. So once you have your piece ready to do your stems, um, I mean, I suggest you just be really organic with it and, um, you know, just mark the stems uh, one by one or you could just make a whole lot of lines. So there's a couple of ways you could do this. You could just use your um, graphite and just start at your stem at the flower and just draw a line down to the base. And Or you could use um, this little choco pe pencil. Some people like this because you would mark it and then you could go over it, but this one can be removed, and what, that's what a lot of people like, is that the other end side of it removes the mark. And I did quite a bit of testing with this pen, with hot and cold, and the marks didn't come back, so I feel quite comfortable using that. Um, so just freehand um, your stems from the flowers to the ground, and have fun. So you can see what I've done here. I've just taken a pencil and I just made marks like this. So some stems are straight, some stems are curved, um, some are overlapping other stems, some stems stop at the beginning of the flower and continue down like this through to the bottom. Uh, so there's no right and wrong, you know, just have fun with it. Some stems are thin, some are bulkier. Um, and I've left room so I can come back and put leaves, which we will do right at the end. Okay, so you can see I'm going to just discuss some of the stitches I've used. And all these stitches are in the book and they have videos as well. So here is a little Pekingese stitch in a size 8. Here is a Palestrina knot in a size 5. Here I've done a threaded back stitch using a size 3. Um, here I've also done a threaded back stitch, but what I did was the back stitch in soft cotton and I threaded it with plied. Um, here is Palestrina in, in very velvet. Here is a closed fly stitch in, in the silk straw. 
This is a Portuguese knotted stitch done in plied. More palestrina threaded. Um, this one here is done with a sock yarn. So look how nice that looks. That's a closed fly stitch. Um, here is a pearl stitch. So I've done that in, and I like that because the knot is different to the palestrina. And that is done in the soft cotton. Uh, here is a wheat ear that I've done in plied. You know, when you want something fine, I've just done the back stitch with the silk straw for my dandelions so that they just have thin, thin little stems. So basically, you know, those would be the stitches that I would use. And what I look for is stitches that have different appearances, some that are knotted, uh, some that are woven and some that can be stitched to be a little bit broad um, and tomorrow we'll talk about using um, more decorative type threads as well to do different types of stitches.